Can get this meme on it. Yeah, when we go pure max, right? Uh, always we prove for like n uh, and infinity uh, for all n. Uh, and we forgot how to do simple calculation. Okay, uh, any question from a previous lecture or you want to ask about assignment? Assignment? Uh huh. What, what, what thing you want to ask? Uh, actually, that's the equivalent statement for the final, right? How to talk about T prime is finer than T. How to use basis to discuss about finer topology okay uh actually you can do that why because because to show that t prime is finer than t what do you need to do not just open set you just straight away go to basis right remember this um, okay i'm talking about this theorem here Uh, same topology. Which question? Yeah, same topology. This one. Uh, the text second second pro second condition here actually is equivalent to what you say. Okay, but uh, on the paper is this one. You need to show this, but. You can show that it's equivalent to what you said. You can write B as the union of B prime. How to index the B prime? You need to index over all points in X. Yeah. It's equivalent. But on the paper, it's this. So that means you need to derive a better. Okay, no? Okay. Actually, I also, I think I secretly use that in one of my proof to show that uh, the lower topology, lower limit topology and uh, what's that? Lower limit topology and K topology is uh, strictly finer than the standard topology. Yeah. Yeah, this part here. This part here. Actually, I'm secretly implying it. I'm secretly implying. Why? Because if I, if I can write like that, right? That meaning I can use for every point in the interval A, B, I can use one of them to cover. It. Actually, I'm secretly using it. Here. Okay. I'm secretly using it, but in more general, it's true. Yeah, so if you have this kind of, uh, if you have this kind of property, this kind of property, that's mean that you can take B to be a union of all the B prime, such that B prime contains the point inside B. So in other words, you can write as B to be union of B prime, X such that X is in B and uh, B prime X uh, contain X and then. Oh, no. mm. This imply that you can try and prove it. Then if you have this kind of condition, it is the same to say that B is equal to some uh, some union of these uh, B prime. 
this one is to maximize the union, uh, right? Because if I have included all points inside my B, definitely, definitely, um, this inclusion is true. Left to right. Okay. Right to left is true because B prime, we already know that it's always a subset of B. So you just take union of them. Still in B. Okay. Okay. Any more question for assignment? Do you need to extend assignment? Nila. Okay. How long do you need? Also Monday. Monday. Okay. Monday. Okay. All right. So this is the last uh, one before we have exam. Right? Then after that we will switch to a fortnightly assignment. That one is after midterm already. Okay, so you won't have an assignment in between next week and exam. So, uh, so what? So you need to do a tutorial because I cannot check you through assignment already. So you need to do tutorial. And uh, so the content of this uh, midterm will be all the way up to uh, apology. Okay. Uh, after finishing topology, then we will con we will start with connectedness. Uh, connectedness, connectedness is not in the middle. Okay, all the way just up to topology. Okay, today we will finish up the portion topology, and then we will move on to connectedness, and that part is not in middle. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we have like how many weeks? Two weeks of buffering. So please spend this okay, one week or two weeks. One week, about one week. Uh, one way of buffering. So within this one week, please read, revise the concept. Okay, which part not clear, you need to ask. Okay, bring to the class and ask. Does it make sense? Okay, if the concept not clear, please bring it up and ask. Um, so uh, for the assignment, right, I haven't marked two, three yet. Uh, and also there are some delay, some non-submission. So I'm wondering how fast I can upload the solution for one, two, three. Mm, I will do it soon if I can, as soon as possible. Okay, so that you can read and then we can also discuss actually. We should discuss the solution. But we haven't done it yet because some of the people missed the submission. And uh, what else? Uh? Anything I need to say? Assignment, midterm. Oh, one more, one more. Um, so I because midterm, right? We are doing on week eight. Week eight, we got one class is on Thursday. Wednesday is holiday. Okay. Um, so it's not this time now. Tomorrow time. Tomorrow. Um, so I wanted to do one replacement for that because uh, I feel like maybe we cannot lose class anymore. So maybe I will try to book a Monday class on the following week, week nine, Monday, okay? Same time, okay? But that that attendance is not compulsory because it's a kind of extra because I count attendance on midterm already. But uh, it's important for the ongoing for this class, so I have to do it. I don't want to like uh, delay or what. Does it make sense? Yes. I know you cannot come on Monday. Yeah. I know, I know. Oh, day one, day one is fine. Day one, you, you, uh, I excuse you, so you are absent with uh, valid reason. So you're okay. But you want to come to the class, huh? Uh, because I also have no choice, because us, yeah, huh? Sorry? Monday, Monday, another time is 11 to 1. Can all of you make it or not? 11 to 1. You can. Others? Eh? Then, then we guys, we, you guys swap with MA1 no? because they want later, you want earlier. So, so you do 11 to 1, then they do 1 to 3. Huh. Okay, no? because I, I remember last time that someone told me that Monday 10 to 12 cannot do, so I miss, I skip this time. 
But this one, since it's not compulsory, I can change it to uh, 11 to 1. 11 to 1, okay, no? At least for the people here, la. it's okay, then we just go on because not compulsory. So 11 to 1 for you guys and then 1 to 3 for them. Okay, week, week 9, Monday. After I book, I will let you know. Okay, so that one is for replacement for midterm. Okay. Okay, right. So last time, right, uh, last time we, where did we left? Uh, let's pick up from last time we left. So last time we uh, mentioned about quotient topology. What's the quotient topology? Yes. So quotient topology start with a uh, quotient space. Uh, I mean quotient map, right? What's the quotient map? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So you have start with a. Uh, mm, oh, a bit too fast. This one. Uh, should we talk about this? Okay. Let's just talk about this. So. And you can think of this uh, our quotient space to be like you have a topological space, okay, and then you partition your space. So the easiest way to think about partition, right, is to your birthday cake right? and distribute your birthday cake. So you make a partition of your cake, okay, and then and then what? And then you have a map from S to this uh, uh, partition of uh, your topological space. We call it S star here. Okay. And then this is a subjective map. Why? Why is this subjective? Why? Yes, by definition, but uh but what's this definition here? Uh, this is what I want to ask. We send all the points that live in the same partition to the partition that they Okay. No. So meaning S star here, you should think of it as partition already. So it's like if you cut your cake into six parts, then this S star here is just six things. Okay, you see the six part as a whole, six things. Okay, so you, you send uh, every piece Okay, every piece of that uh, portion into that portion. Does that make sense? Okay. And with subjective map, uh, with topological space as a domain, then you can define a quotient topology. Like last time, well, how to define this quotient topology? So we declare anything in X star open if the inverse image is open. Why? Because inverse image live in where? In a topological space. So in topological space, we already define what is open there. So you, will, you can decide whether the inverse image open or not. Okay. So if it is open, then your set is open. Okay. And this is what we call a quotient space. Or sometimes we call uh, identification space or decomposition space. Okay. So I, we identify some point inside our topological space. Or we try to decompose our topological space into this partition to study the topology. Okay, so that's why it makes sense. And then last time we left with this example here, where we can take a closed unit ball, right? And then we identify the boundary point where the points are living on the radius one, and then treat all the other points as a one point set. And you can imagine that you take this, okay, or the Pontun P, right? And then you just you just stick all the boundary together. And you can imagine that you get some sphere. And actually, you can prove that these things is homeomorphic, okay? Homeomorphic to the unique sphere. Okay, homeomorphic, what does it mean? You can form a bijection. Okay, not just bijection. This bijection has to be continuous. Okay, whether F and F inverse both have to be continuous for both. Okay, so how to form this bijection? Anyone do homework or not? Go and find this bijection. Huh? Sorry? 
G I F. Jeep, Jeep, Jeep. Cook what Jeep? Kim's. What's that? Oh, and then what's that? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And then what's that? Oh, I see the boundary, yeah. Oh, you mean this one, huh? You mean this one, right? But can you write down a map or not? You need to write it down. This one is just an illustration. Okay, can, can you write down a map? Because it's a genuine map. It's a genuine function that's bijective and continuous. You, need, you can create a genuine map. Why? Because we have description for closed unit ball and closed unit sphere. What are those? Closed unit point are the point x, y such that x squared plus y squared is less than equal to 1. And then on the unit sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to 1. So can you send all these points that satisfy this condition to those points that satisfy those conditions? about it. Okay, so uh, there's a very algebraic way to do it, okay? Uh, first, you can think about uh, okay. So let me describe the describe the uh, process to you first, and then I'll write down the process. So first, what can you do? Oh, actually, I draw it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. So I mean, let's start from here. So um, you can think of. Uh, You need ball like this, okay? But we take it as close, so we need to include the boundary point here. So I need to, so our B, let me put here. So our unique ball, let's denote it as a B two bar. B two is open ball, right? So to close it, we need to take the closure, okay? We take the closure. So we include include a boundary point, but I want to put it dotted for some reason later, mm, include boundary point. And then we want to form a homeomorphism between unique sphere. Okay, how are we going to do this? Okay, how are we going to do this? So, I mean, how to make a 3D thing flat? It's kind of a problem here. Okay, how to make this 3D thing flat? Sorry? Yes, projection. How to project? You cannot simply project, right? Um, so there's a thing called, uh, if you take taken differential geometry, uh, they will do something called the stereographic projection. Okay, so what, what does it mean by stereographic projection? Let me write down the word first. Stereographic projection. Okay, what do we mean by this? So you can take away the north pole. Okay, you can take a north pole and then you can form a line with a point on your sphere. Form a straight line. And then you extend it. Forever extend it. So you can imagine that um, this sphere, right? This unique sphere should be intersected by the xy plane. So this line will meet xy plane somehow. Correct or not? Can you imagine? You have a ball. I don't have a ball. Uh, I think complex some also use it. Uh, also use it. Complex also use it. You guys talk about Riemann sphere or what? Right? It's a unique sphere. Uh, here is also a unique sphere. It's also a sphere, but I mean, yeah, it's a unique sphere. Here is also a unique sphere, but I, I, I say, I'm, I'm saying this sets, what does this uh, stereographic projection does is you take your north pole, okay, and then you connect to any point on your uh, sphere with a straight line, and then you extend this straight line 
this straight line will intersect the xy plane okay uniquely okay so you can imagine you do this for everything every point on the sphere other than north pole because north pole join north pole is like no line right so if you a bit away from north pole then you can find a line and then you extend that line and then this will map uh this will map every point on the sphere other than north pole to r2 Okay, no, no. How about the opposite one? The opposite one will intercept something inside the, uh, inside this, uh, inside this, uh, how to say, inside this, uh, this on SY plane. Make sense? Okay, so you can fill up the whole R2 actually. You can fill up the whole R2. You can you imagine? So when you go, Closer, closer, closer to North Pole, right? That intersection with XY is further and further away. And then you can see that you can, like, taking limit, you can reach everything. Because when you reach to North Pole, to North Pole is like, you cannot intersect XY anymore. Okay? So this is a stereographic projection. Later, we'll write down the formula, okay? So now you just listen to the concept first, then later we'll write down this formula. So in this way, we can create uh, homeomorphism between S2, we call this S2, without North Pole to, to where? To uh, R2. Okay, let's denote this as a homeomorphism for me. Okay, to R2. So R2, maybe we draw like the normal xy axis. Okay. How to go here, how to go from here to uh, the ball? How to go from here to the ball? Now we are all flat already. So, seems like this ball is bounded, right? Huh? Bounded, yeah, bounded. So, it can't be bounded stuff with unbounded stuff is homeomorphic, right? Cannot, 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 I don't know. So pretty is the question. Can a bounded uh, object and an unbounded object homeomorphic? Can? can you go example? Oh, okay, okay, wait, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't just say bounded, I did here as would be close also. Not just bounded, but close. So meaning you you have the limit point include there. You cannot consider something like this, so you need to consider something like that. Hmm. Okay, you need to close also. So not just bounded, uh, it's also close. Okay, so I think cannot, if not wrong. You can try and see whether if there exists a formula. You can try and prove it whether yes or no. So that's there exists a homeomorphism between close and not close. Homeomorphism space. Yeah. Oh, yo. Huh? Sorry. Yeah. Wait, let me think, let me think. Wait, 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 wait for a moment, wait for a moment. I think not just close, eh. there's more, more important thing inside here, but we haven't introduced the concept because R2 is also, hmm? R2 close, oh, okay, R2 not close. Okay, okay, yeah, continue. Zero to zero, what, what, I divide the whole up. Uh, what are you trying to do? Uh, zero. One to zero. This one? Yeah. Two, ah. Exactly zero one and uh, we divide the inside into three. Uh, I mean three open open uh intervals and then send to infinite managing to zero zero to one equation that can be done. Oh, open to open. Uh, Which one? This you mean this this interval? Yeah, and this zero to zero one to three to minus infinity to zero. <laughs> this is similar to wait 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 slowly slowly slowly. So what are you trying to do? Zero to where? 
two point zero two zero one and the uh, interval this zero, is right. the, the interval zero to one oh three to zero to minus to oh zero. Wait I so send zero to one over three to where? Oh I mean it's uh open open bracket. Open Six, zero. Oh, okay, open and then to, to minus infinity to zero. To minus infinity to zero and then and then uh one one over three to two to two over three to zero to one. So you need to include now, right? Because you oh. haven't tell me where one of the three go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, you can try, you can try. See, you got contradiction. Uh, OK. OK, so what I want to say here is if you take uh, this close ball here without boundary, I think need compactness. Huh? I think need compactness, but I can't talk about compactness. Now. <laughs> I mean, if I don't talk about compact compactness or not, this question is still valid, right? valid man if god find one uh, no why no right still valid but anyway i don't want to talk about general concept first but let's say if i take away um, the boundary of this ball i can uh, make a homeomorphism between the open ball with r2 so idea is i can extend this ball infinitely big until i cover until i cover r2 yeah, no. So how 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 I gonna do this? Huh? So this this idea actually come from one concept. Uh come from this map here. So what's this map here? Let me see. This map is uh, tangent pi r over two. Tangent pi r over two. So here is from one to minus one. Okay, so what am I doing here? So this map here is mapping from R to R. Can you see what am I doing here? I take a real line under this map. This real line becomes like this. And then the top asymptote is minus one. The bottom asymptote is one. Is it true? And check. Okay. Okay, you can check. Okay, this is I think this is true. You can check. Okay. So you take a line, become something like this. So here, what do we do? Eh? What do we do here? So um yeah, so what do we do here? So you can imagine that this this ball right is sliced by infinitely many lines. But what's the difference between these different slice of line? They are in different angle. Okay, so you need to send different line to different tangent pi over r, depending on your depending on your angle. Okay or not? Does it make sense? Does it make sense? I can take a real line, okay, and then I uh, map it to R2. Okay, so this is what I did here. So first I construct a map from the open ball to R2 first, and then need to show that this is a homeomorphism, okay. In particular, it is a bijective, it is continuous. Continuous is quite obvious because we are just using called, called tri triangle, tri trigonometry function. Okay, continuous so quite obvious, but if to show bijective, you need to write down the inverse map. And you need to write down inverse map, and then you can find out that still a trigo function, okay, still continuous. So this is a map between B2 and R2. So I use the, uh, what's this? Uh? What is the domain of R? What's the domain of R? Yes, what's the domain of R? Where's the radius of the ball? And most one. Uh, zero to one. Uh, can cannot be one because we take away the boundary already. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. No. So this is the map. And then, uh, how about stereographic projection just now? How to make that line actually? Okay. So I write down the formula here. 
let's look at the formula first and then I will tell you why this formula works. So to send a, a point in a sphere to the intersection is using this formula here. OK, don't ask me how to get it first. See the formula first. Later, I'll tell you how to get it. OK, so this is some combination of X, Y and Z. OK, and then how to go backward? I write down the inverse map also for, for, for stereographic projection. So you just start from PQ and then you get all these. So you can ask, obviously ask a question. So how to get this? So uh, what do you do? Uh, you take uh, any point on your sphere, okay? And then, and then what? And then you need to form that, uh, what's that? You need to form that uh, straight line, correct or not? So how to form that straight line? Uh? How to form straight line? Line of equation. You can remember on a calculus to line of equation. How to form line of equation? Given two points. You need to find gradient, right? You need to find the direction of the vector. So direction of vector is what? So yes. This is rho and p. Which one? Eh? This one is rho. This one is p. Okay. This one is rho. This one is p. So how to form direction vector here? So you see, this one minus this one is what? Is the direction from the point on sphere to North Pole. And then this one, from the point on XY plane to North Pole. So these two directions should mesh up if they are on the. Okay. They mesh up, up to some uh, row here. Is the gradient of this row? I don't know. So you solve this. You solve this, then you will get all these points coming up. Okay, so the, the main point actually is this line. So forming that uh, line going from North Pole to point on sphere and then intersect to the R2. Okay, so to find this this point right is to solve this solve what is rho, solve what is p, solve what is q, and then you will get this, and solve what is x, what is y, what is z, depend on which where you are coming from. You need to assume one and then solve one, assume one, solve one. Okay, okay, you can try and go and work it out. Uh, so from this, what do we do? All we do was just a uh, bijection between open ball with. Uh, S2 without the North Pole. That's all. How about the boundary? How about the boundary of the open ball and the North, North Pole? How about that? Yeah, we just met all the boundary point to, to the North Pole. This is bijection. Why is this a bijection? It is not bijection on the closed ball, but it is bijection on the quotient space because we already mentioned that in the quotient space, all the point in the boundary we treat as one point. Then we send this one point to North Pole. Okay or not? So it's not a homeomorphism between closed ball and uh, S2. It's the quotient space and the S2. Okay. Only when you treat the boundary point as one point, then there's this, there's this uh, homeomorphism. If you don't treat them as a one point, they are all individual points. So many points go to one point, how can it be bijection? Okay or not? So is the homeomorphism between quotient space with S2, okay? Not the closed ball itself. Okay, so you prove that under this map, actually uh, the bijection uh, continuous function that we composed just now was actually continuous. Okay, so you need to check the open set criteria. Okay, you need to check the open set criteria. So, I mean, I don't want to go through the detail in the class, um, but there are really two types of uh, open set you need to consider. There's one op open set that include North Pole. There's one that doesn't include North Pole. Okay, if there's 
the open set doesn't include North Hall, it is just some open set coming from the interior. You should see that from the map. If not from the map, at least from the discussion we discussed just now. How about a open set surrounding North Hall here? Where's this? Where's the pre-match of this open set? It should be some open set that surround the boundary of the crossbow. Why? Because you need to make sure under that map, this thing is mapped to North Pole. Okay, so you can imagine that when I identify this point together, then this is really an open set that cover around this pole. Ah, uh, you need to prove it. Lo. This one is just like, how to say, uh, just an idea. So you need to prove it. So you need to really write down what is happening. What is the pre-image of this map? Okay. And then to show that something G is continuous, you need to show that for every open set in the core domain, the pre-image is open. So there are two kinds of pre-image you need to discuss here. Whether the, the, ops, the open set include not for or not. Include how? Is it inverse image open? Does it include inverse image open or not? Okay, both open. Okay, good. It is continuous. Does it make sense? Okay. I didn't go through detail, uh, but I put the this detail inside um inside the lecture notes. You can have a you can go through it. Okay. So far, any uh, question or not? Any question about this particular example? Hmm? Any question about this particular example? So I mean, more on this uh, quotient space study of quotient space will be done in uh, algebraic topology. Okay. All right. Uh, before we left uh, quotient space, right? There are a few more property that I want to discuss, but we won't prove it. Uh, for example, this one. Let p from x to y be a quotient map. And let Z be a, um, I guess you should have a topological space here, but they put space. And uh, let G be a map. Wait, here Z is a normal Z. Be a map that is constant on each. Uh, P inverse of Y, okay, for every Y. Are you guys start imagining what, what's happening here? So you should imagine that there's a quotient map from X to Y, which is a subjective map, right? So for every Y, there's maybe a lot of X get maps to it. And then there's another Z, okay, coming up. So maybe let's draw like this first. Let me join this way. So you have a quotient map like that. Okay. So maybe we put subjective map like this. One. Subject. And there's another map from X to Z. Okay. What 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 does this map do? You look at Y. You look at the pre-image. Which is constant on this guy. What does it mean? What does this mean? By constant. On this pre-image. On this pre-image, I send it to something else. The same thing. If you live in the same pre-image, you get sent to the same place. Constant. Okay or not? Make sense? Not make sense? Uh, let me think uh, how to draw this. Okay. So since it is a, it is a quotient map, right? So maybe we, let's say this is an X. Okay. And then we quotient it. So maybe we quotient it by one, two, or I say A, B, C, D. Okay, so I send it to A, C, D, B like that. Quotient or not? Okay. 
So I send region A to a partition A. Okay. And then what does it mean by constant here? So I send region A maybe to one, send region B to two, send region C to three, region D to four. So it's constant on the whole region. I send the whole region to some one thing. It's, this is what it means by constant. Huh? Okay, can, 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 can. As long as you remain constant, can you remain constant? That's fine. Yeah, you can uh, send D to one also. Can. Yeah, as long as within that region, they are the same, get sent to the same place. Yes, that's right. I think, yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. So the result is what? What's this result here? Then, uh, G will induces a map. A map from which direction to direct which direction to from uh there's a name right yeah f from y to z so there exists a map f so there exists the map f such that there's a map from y to z not only that such that such that what such that f Compose P equals to G. So this means this diagram commute. Okay or not? You see, uh, why not this direction? Why this direction? Uh? Exactly like what uh, Yihan example just now. We can potentially send D to one. This means what? It's like we we identify A and B already. But in this space, eh, this space never identify different partition one. So meaning what? This space uh, pick up the differences between four regions. Okay. Okay, no. But this G I uh, can do weird things one. But as long as you are concerned on one point, you can also send everything to three. Uh. If I send everything to three, what should I map from here to here? I also send every point to three. Uh? Does it make sense? But not the other way around. Oh. Not the other way around. Oh. If I send every point to three, ah, how do I map from three to everything here such that the thing commute? Cannot, ah. One point can only, can only go to one point. Ah. Cannot go to four point. Ah. So you cannot commute the other way. Hmm. Yeah. No, this is not partition. Ah. This is a proper good thing. Ah, okay, yeah, sure. This P, yeah. Uh -huh. Which one? G, yeah. G, you mean G. P is going from, from uh, sorry, P is from a topological space to a quotient space. Yeah. Okay. Didn't assign value, yeah. Didn't assign value, yeah. I just assign, what's, what's the value assigned here? Is the region, is the partition. Mm. That's all. It's like you can think of a school here. La. I don't care you are Brian or Sonin, as long as you are coming for I put A. I put B. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay or not? Okay. Okay. So not only this, okay, this is just an induced map. It's quite easy to see. But uh we want to extend this uh, result further. Uh let's extend this result further. Uh then we can talk about whether this induced map is uh, continuous or not. Okay. Because Z is a topological space and uh Y have the quotient topology. So F is continuous if and only if G is continuous. Okay. This is the first part. So maybe put in the put it as the first part. 
the here. Okay, so this is the first part. And then second part, F is a quotient map if and only if G is a quotient map. Okay. So meaning what? So this is a this is one way to study whether a function is continuous or not, whether a function is a, uh is what is quotient map or not. Okay, this is another way to study whether a map is continuous or uh, a quotient map. Okay. Yeah, so this F here could be determining the property of G and F could determine each other. And this is what we want to say. Right? Okay. Yes. Definitely of G. Uh. You need to understand what's y first. You need to understand what's y first. So you need to understand what's the quotient map first. Quotient map is a surjective. Okay. All right. So you can prove this. Uh, proof is just uh, um, routine checking the open stuff. Okay. And uh, there's another one example I want to talk about. Uh, this one. So the corollary is if you have a surjective continuous map. Okay. And then what can you do? What can you do? Uh, you also you also consider this uh, quotient space here. So let epsilon and uh, let x star be like similar like what we discussed just now. You just consider all the pre match of your um, core domain. And then uh, give it a quotient topology. So make your G a quotient map. So what happens here? So what happens here? So let's write down what we have. So G is a map from X to Z. Okay, and then uh, we form this X star here using a quotient topology. So we have this uh, subjective map. And then, wow, well, what's this? Uh, this is quite reminiscing, right? Subjective map, quotient space. Huh? First isomorphism theorem. So why where is the first isomorphism theorem? So there's no isomorphism here, right? But here we have bijection. Okay. So this there exists a uh, mm, there exists a uh, f. There exists a uh, f which is bijective and continuous. It doesn't say homeomorphic, uh, it just says that this is continuous and then you can find the inverse. That's all. It doesn't mention whether inverse is continuous or not. Okay, so it's a bijection, and then it's continuous, and okay, they give a I give a criteria here. If you want this this guy to be isomorph uh, homeomorphic, what you need to have is you have to start with G is a quotient map. So this somewhat link quotient map and uh, homeomorphism together. Okay, if you want this inverse to be continuous also, then you need to make sure that when you do this G map here, is a quotient map. So meaning every open set here 
the pre-image have to be open first. Only then this inverse here will be continuous as well. Mm. Say again. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the point. Yes, yes, you are right. I think that's the point. Yeah, that's the right. yeah. Ah, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, 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 sorry. How we form this X star? How we form this X star using G actually? This X star is formed using G. Hmm. Just that. Uh, just that what this G inverse might not be open, right? Might not be open. If it is open, then I mean, if it is open in the set X, it means that G is a quotient map. So it might not be open. Just that we identify the inverse image together under the space here. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. And uh, what else? Uh, actually, there's one criteria on uh, this uh, space. That is, if the core domain is Hausdorff, then the quotient space you get would be Hausdorff as well. Okay. The quotient space you get would be Hausdorff as well. Oh, uh, so for G to be quotient, right, you need to talk about all open set. But here we just consider inverse image of one point. Uh, if you want to talk about quotient, you need to talk about all open set. The pre image of all open set is still open. Here we just consider inverse image of one point when we do this identification. Yeah, it's not inverse image of random set. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if you have this picture here, then you can say that uh, you can know that when this quotient space is hostile. Okay. It is hostile if uh, Z is hostile. Okay, so meaning, meaning what? Meaning you use uh, the property of Z to study the quotient space uh, of uh, X okay, under, under this map G. Um, in this case, uh, in this scenario, typically we are interested in X star. Typically we are interested in quotient space, actually. We are interested in quotient space. So that's why you see uh, the result is on quotient space. And then this result is also on quotient space. This space, uh, this F is mapping from S star to Z. Okay. So typically we are interested in this quotient space. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Because you know why quotient space is more general? It is like rational number also include integer. Because integer is like two over one. Uh, you also divide by something, but you divide by something trivial. You also can divide by something trivial where S star become X. Okay. Yeah. So it recovers something what we've done before. Okay. Yeah, things true for rational. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Mm, yeah. Any question before we left the topology topic? Uh, chapter. How many weeks are we spent? Now it's six weeks. Six weeks. So we spent about six weeks to reach topology. Set theory topology. Okay, any question before we proceed to the uh, third chapter in the monk Chris? No? I think this is a good good exercise to think about. Try and think about this. Okay, uh, if not, then let's break until 108. Then we'll resume.
先生。Why did you skip Monday class? Why did you skip Monday class? Time is done. Huh? Time is done. Jia Liu's thing. Oh. Huh? You are you recording? What's the thing? 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 啊，你那两个不不不一个字，一小个。Yeah, this one neighborhood, open neighborhood. 哎、hey, ，So actually my assignment 那个 neighborhood 是 open 的。Actually 我要 add 进去比较准 ，But if you see, if you ever see neighborhood in my thing 啊 ，is open. Somehow I leave it out because 呢、uh,。When we talk about neighborhood, it's almost open uh, every time in this class because we care more about open neighborhood, open set containing act. This term terminology uh, is just sometimes just a convenience way to talk about open set containing three word mask. Then I replace by open neighborhood. But open neighborhood still too long. Uh. Go neighborhood, but I don't want to confuse the neighborhood they use in the Moncrief because Moncrief say that open neighbor, uh, neighborhood is just some set that contain open set. But what we have is we really is the open set to be our open. Name. So this is the difference. Uh, just mind you, different. Is一百第一百五十八条是吗？没有，那时候我们去一个，我们出国了，出国去那个那那些那国家才能去那出国，然后那个 camp 叫做 Biro Biro d a d a n i a 做的 camp， 就是有点类似是洗脑 camp 嘛，洗完脑袋就是说你毕业过后你要回来，我不能。一个就是说，因为我们给奖学金嘛，比，奖学金三年少掉啊，奖金就有可能要回来咯，要钱给你多，像类似这样的东西啦，去上去 camp 这样，然后，呀，然后我们就提到一个点咯，一个新的方向，忘记做一百五八奖是不是？最终。好处是你要给，就是给福利些咯。对对对，好处是。哈哈哈哈哈哈！对对对，就是这一条，他一直天天跟我们讲这一条东西吧
你可以发言你带写什么东西啊然后大概讲一下讲说我打算把你的 是跟十五？哎，是哎，我放在十五哎。我想一下，如果放在十二，你会怎样嘛？会干嘛？OK吗？OK，应该OK吗？不用做到什么太复杂，只是来。一些Presentation 你只要有一个口气你就可以可以啊我觉得可以可以应该是 
그 Okay. All right. So let's start. So connectedness first, and then we will talk about compactness. Okay. How what is connectedness? Eh? So whenever we, uh, I talk about this uh, nomenclature with uh, MA1 this morning. So why we use the word connectedness? Why we don't use different word? Okay. So whenever you see definition, right? I don't know how you think about definition. Whenever I see a definition, okay. The first definition should describe is describing a situation. Okay, so for example, convergence. Situation of convergence of sequence is what? For every epsilon, there exists an n such that n greater than n. All the term behind capital A n is epsilon close to the limit. So this is a situation. But why I say it converges? Why cannot I name it diverge? Why I don't name it? Some other things. Slipping. Why I don't say the if the sequence is slipping, then for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists an n. Why I don't use different word? Eh? So you need to think about this. So you need to think about this idea. What's the idea of converge? Uh, why we use converge to describe this scenario? Okay, for example, why we use continuous? To say that a function, when it satisfies maybe epsilon delta definition or sequential definition, why continuous? So this this is sometimes really mm, how to say, have to do with the person, the first person or the first group of person that decide to name this scenario or this situation, okay? And then the reason why they use this word should come from a intuition about continuity a uh, intuition about converge so definition is just trying to make it precise such that we can check it precise to the sense we can check it for example uh, not just continuity uh, i can change a little bit and become uniform continuous change a little bit become list chip continuous so why are these different continuous uh? Why not uniform continuous is a continuous? Eh? You get what I mean? So they are like building on what happening. So first I found continuity. And then I see, wow, there's like a stronger continu continuity. Eh? Okay, we name it a uniform continuity. Maybe there's a special constant that exists. Eh? Okay, different one. I name it lift chip continuous. Because lift chip found it. You get what I mean? Okay, so these definitions are built on what people know and then what have been known. Okay. Right. So for example, here, I will tell you what is connectedness yet. So when you see connect, what does it mean? Huh? Cannot separate. Uh, you can think like that. Or you think as it as joined together and cannot separate. Okay, so now we will discuss. What is called separation? 
what is join? What kind of join is join? Is every join a connected thing or not? Okay, so this is what we are going to discuss. You get what I mean? So this is pure max. So once I tell you an idea, you need to quickly think a different scenario, whether they will satisfy this condition or not. Okay, so this is pure max. So study pure max is good. Why good? No matter what things I tell you, right, you can quickly link to different idea concept, and then you can separate concept by concept. Okay, this is not continuous. This is uniform continuous. This is Lipschitz continuous. Uh, even if it's continuous, there's already a lot of level, for example. Okay. Okay. So let's start with motivation first before we introduce connectedness. So let's say uh, if f prime equals zero on x domain, is it true that uh, your f is constant in the domain? Okay, so this is the first question you can think about. If the derivative is zero, is it constant on all domain? Second question, wait a fx is continuous on x domain. Is it true that, uh, and also if I know that f minus two is less than zero and uh, f two is greater than zero, then can I find a point such that fx equal to zero? So it's like a intermediate value thing here for some x in minus two and two. True or not? The handshake is hang. Don't say yow yow tow yow lip look low there. True or false? False. Huh? Why false? Eh? The domain can be separate. So give an example. For example, first one, what example you can give? Okay, so we can do something like, you mean like this, then like this. Huh? Not include zero. So let me take this point a bit. Okay. And then maybe use different color then. Use this color. Okay, take this point away. And then take this point. Okay, why I want to take this point away? Because if it's non continuous, then it's not differentiable then. So we want to avoid the differentiability problem. So we take away both point from zero, still continuous. I mean, still the derivative is zero on its domains because our domain is R throw away zero. Okay. It's constant, but constant on both sides, not the whole thing constant. constant. Okay. So if you just, if you are an N, you see the my living on X greater than zero, you will use the number Okay. If you are an N living in X less than zero, you will only live on the lower level. Okay. okay, how about the second one? Huh? Similar case, right? So if you have a domain like this, domain like this, there's nothing that uh, achieve the middle point here. No points in the, in the, um, so there's no point at zero. I mean, zero doesn't take out any point in the middle here. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. Good. So here, uh, what we do is we split our domain. So how many, uh, uh, how many, that, uh, how many theorem you have seen before? So you have seen inver intermediate value theorem. Okay, what's intermediate value theorem? So if your function is continuous on a closed and bounded interval, 
okay? And R is the real number between FA and FB, where A and B is the end point of your closed boundary interval. Then there's this uh, element in between closed boundary interval, let's say C, okay? FC equal to the R, where R is the number in between FA and FB. Okay, yeah? Hmm. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. That's where you mean piecewise integration. Where, where, where? Just uh like the zero zero. Uh this one is piecewise continuous. Yeah. But when we talk about continuous, then you have to continuous on the whole domain. Oh I mean uh wait uh this this domain we take away zero. This one we take away zero. So oh yeah. Take away, take away, take away. Yeah, take away zero. Yeah, take away zero. Why is piecewise continuous? Is there anything that is piecewise continuous but? It's finite discontinuous. Finite discontinuous. Countable discontinuous. Countable. Well, I was having a problem imagining that function. The step function, the flow function. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Because now we need to throw away at that point because we want to define derivative, not just uh, discontinuity. Otherwise, derivative. Um. Okay, and then what else? Uh, uh, a string value theorem. Okay, a string value theorems also work in a closed bounded interval. And then, of course, a uh, uniform continuity. Okay. Yeah. So these are actually relies on uh, connectedness and compactness. Uh, we will see soon. All right. So let's define definition. Uh, define this term here. A separation. So let's define separation. So a separation of a uh, topological space. You see, uh, why we involve topolog topological space here? So definitely we want to use topology here. This definition should involve open set, okay? Or closed set. Uh. So how do we involve uh, open set here? So a separation of a topological, topological space is a pair UV of disjoint, okay? And non-empty. Okay, you don't say that I can uh, split my set using empty set and except a bit crazy, right? So it must be non-empty, okay, and disjoint, okay, empty, disjoint and open, okay. So these are disjoint, empty, open subset U and V of X such that X equals to U union V. Or sometimes, right, if, if it is disjoint, uh, we might be, you might see this kind of uh, notation here. Okay, if it is disjoint, meaning the intersection here is uh, zero. It's empty. Okay, maybe you sometimes see this notation here. Disjoint union. Okay, and we will say that a topological space X is connected if it has no separation. Okay. So the particle space is connected if it has no separation. Okay. No separation means what? No separation means what? So you need to go and see what is separation. Separation is what? Disjoint union, disjoint union of open set, open subset, non-empty open subset. So if there's no meaning that don't exist, they don't exist. Okay, they don't exist. So don't exist uh, a bit hard. Oh. Right. In Max, uh, how to prove something that's nothing? Nothing or don't how to prove that. 
If you say that exists, I can construct one for you. Man. If proof that there's no, so how to prove? That if you want to prove there's nothing. Contrast positive, suppose there's something, huh? and then that something cannot happen. One. Okay? Yeah. So a bit tricky, uh, this definition here. So meaning what? If you want to show connect, uh, not, not connected is easy. You just produce me to open subset, which is not empty and is strong. Okay. All right, so there's some equivalent definition here. So a bit hard to check, but no worries. We give you some criteria here. So given a topological space, uh, TFAE, the following are equivalents. Okay, I think before we talk about this better, we define something else first. Otherwise, uh, we lost some word. So how about a subset of uh, X to be open, uh, sorry, to be connected? How do you find open set in a subset of a topological space? How do you decide something is open inside a subset of a topological space? Or in other words, subspace of a X, what topology is in inherited? Sorry? Intersection, right? So you can consider the subspace topology there. So a subset A of X is connected. It's a connected subspace, subset. So it's a connected subset if it is a connected topological space when given the subspace topology. Okay. Uh, this, this definition makes sense. Why? Because I already tell you how to decide a topological space is connected. Okay. And then how to decide the subspace is connected, you need to take the connected thingy to intersect with your subspace. This is what it means by um, even the subspace topology. Okay. Okay. TFA, TFAE. So how to decide a space is connected. So these are very classic characterization. So obviously, uh, one characterization is uh, S cannot be written as the union of to disjoint non empty open set. This one is just uh, by definition, right? Okay. And then from here, you can quickly deduce that it also cannot be written as the union of two disjoint non open closed set. Okay. So if you consider a complement also doesn't work, okay? And, and then the next one is what? C, X has no non-empty proper subset. U wishes of open and close. Actually, this is not quite immediate. Almost immediate, but not quite immediate. But I think one place to see easier, easily is A, B, C, D, e, E. The only, the only open and close subset. The only closed open subset of X is X and the empty set. Okay. 
There's only if your set has only two things that is both closed and okay. If your set only has the home space and the empty space to be both closed and open, then your space is connected. Okay, try and think about this. This is quite fun to think about. Try and think about this. Uh, you can discuss with your friend how to prove this. Try and prove A and E first, and then others is quite easy. Okay, A and E. This one, last one. Yes, A to E. This one is quite fun to think about. Try and think about it. Discuss with your friend. This one very standard, so you must know. Just work from a definition. Work right now the definition. Just now I say use contra uh, contradiction, right? So you should do it here. Okay. Okay, three minutes about. So let's do which direction first? A to E or E to A first? A to E, okay, sure, let's do A to E. So suppose X is connected. Hmm? Huh? X is connected. X is connected. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No separation. Yeah, yeah. So no yeah. no destroy union destroy copy. Okay, let's do A to E first, huh? So how do we do this? You got idea? Yeah. Okay. And that's how you deduce also. Hmm? I don't know how to I mean, how you sh you mean just now you are trying to argue X is open. So if you cannot write as a union, then why is it open? It's connected. Sure, this one, this one, sure, but yeah. how you deduce? Oh, I mean, there's no basis here. How should you know that? Because 
Huh? Why? 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 If you cannot write in the union of the two points, then there are two points that are zero distance at all. There are two points that you cannot separate. But why are you trying because to? Because if, mm -hmm. if you are destroyed, yeah. Then uh, let's say. Oh, there's some distance between them. Yeah. But if you cannot destroy, you cannot say there are no distance between them. Correct. It's just that you cannot separate. It's like it, you. It's just like you cannot be off top for you, but maybe still got distance between them. Wait. Now we go from A to E first. So why suppose not <laughs> the assumption? Then you bye bye now. <laughs> we are in the connected world. <laughs> so you suppose this one not first lah? Uh, suppose the result is not first. Then you want to prove the contra positive marker or not? We go from A to E. Uh. Yours, we, we can go from E to A later. Okay, okay. So we go from A to E first. And then, so we suppose these are not the only open and closed set. Long. So there's some non proper set, which is both closed and open. Then, yes, we also both closed and both open. So the non, the proper one will form the separation. So the proper A and X minus A will form the separation of X because they are both disjoint, both open. Why? Because you start with a closed and open set. So the complement is open also. Okay, not empty because you assume it's proper. Okay, then done. So there's no distant discussion here. So this is the special about topology. Okay, you maybe can think about distance in your mind, but our argument can skip that. Okay. And how about the other direction? So from for E to N. So like E and say, maybe we can say that it's not connected first. So not connected means what? There's a separation. No? If there's a separation, then then the U and V, the then ah, V is coming out of U. Is closed and then V is the open and closed. Yes, correct. Yes, that's right. Yes. So if you can write uh X as a U intercept V, oh, sorry, U union V, okay, and then U is open, V is open, but V is the complement of U, so it's closed also. So V is the open and closed set. Okay. Yeah, so very standard uh, uh, logical proof. If you don't, even if you don't have idea about um, connectedness. So this is a special, a uh, special thing about maths. Uh. So um, most of the thing we deduce are uh, we actually have no idea about it. What do I mean by that is we just try to deduce the consequence. Before we talk about this consequence, we can deduce this consequence using logical statement, like what we did just now. It's just negate uh, and then definition. Uh. We never think about this thing in our mind, you know. I mean, what do I mean by that is I didn't really think about what is the real concept or real situation is happening. We're just trying to construct and then negate contradiction. That's all. Okay, but after all this, you can try and think, what does this open and close trying to say about this connectedness? Why there's only two of them is closed or open? Like that, this kind of question. Okay, so there are two processes uh, in pure max. One process is you need to able to deduce consequence using logical, logical statement. And then second thing is you need to be able to uh, understand the idea behind this uh, logical uh statement okay so separate into two things you need to train these two okay mm, yeah because in in research frontier often uh, we met uh, often the stuff we met is what we don't know we have no concept about it but somehow from logical argument we deduce it hey what is this thing uh? we already calculated or what's this you get what I mean or not? So it's very important that you can do logical 
reasoning. And then through here, you discover new thing. Okay. But I didn't say that new things always discover by this way. Maybe new things is come from other intuition also can. But still, you need to come back to logical reasoning to, uh, to like, uh, to how to say, to, uh, to, huh? conceive? No, eh, not conceive. Eh. Suifu is to persuade, to persuade the others. Okay. Conceive is a liar. <笑>好像是騙人耶好像是騙人耶好像是騙人耶好像是騙人耶好像是騙人耶好像是騙人耶好像是騙人耶好像是騙人耶好像是騙人耶好像是騙人耶好像是騙人耶好像是騙人耶
No me, no la idea. Uh, I'm not sure, but use com completeness, right? Completeness axiom. I mean the intermediate value theorem in R. Uh, uh. This one? What did you use? What kind of contradiction? Okay, okay. How about the rest? Eh? How do you guys prove your intermediate value theorem? What's contra? Oh, construct. Construct what? Mm. Yeah. Sure. Ah, oh, that one is the next third interval method. Ah, oh, that one is the next third interval, yeah. Or you can use the completeness axiom also. You consider all the points less than or equal to the point that you want to find. And then the soup of this set is the point that you want. Okay, yeah. But if you are connectedness, then one, two, three, I mean, two line, one line, done. Okay, yeah. So this is how good is pure max is. <laughs> how good is pure max is. Um, okay, what else? Huh? What time? Four more minutes. So maybe let's prove one more before we left. Let's prove one more, then we left. So what property we want to prove here? Okay, let's let's look at this property. Maybe we don't have time to prove, but let's take this. So how to decide a uh, space is connected? So here is the lemma. If y is a subspace of x, so here is subspace, not just subset. A separation of y is a pair of disjoint non empty set A and B whose union is Y. Okay. And then either of these two set here would contain a limit point of another. Okay, so this one, um, write down what's the criteria of a separation of a subspace, okay? Then the space Y is connected if the above is true. So, okay, not the above is true, but if there are there exists no separation that we discussed above. Okay, so just now we just talked about separation using open set, right? But here try to link to limit point. Okay, it tries to link to a limit point. Okay, so this two disjoint open set here, right? None of the open set. Uh, sorry, yeah. There's a destroy all oh, no, 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 whose union is why neither of them compare limit point. So here doesn't didn't mention about open end, but I mentioned about this uh, limit point. Okay, so how to turn the open condition to this limit point? Okay, it's the um, is the idea of uh, this lemma here. Okay, so this is a criteria to check whether a uh, space is connected or not. But uh, we will continue to prove this and then we will give example on this. Okay, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay, so try and think about how to go from open set and then to this uh, limit point stuff. Okay, and then try and test it, test it on uh, close, I mean, interval. Try to test it on interval because we know that interval is kind of connected. We haven't proved it, but you can try. Use this criteria. Check. Okay, we will talk more. We will talk more on uh, tomorrow. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow.